Hello there. Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and perfect grooming. And welcome to a sub-zero day in the middle of the winter here in the United Kingdom, which is the perfect environment and day in which to talk about the overcoat because the overcoat is a timeless classic in the intentionally well-dressed man's wardrobe and for a number of very good reasons. Firstly, it is a significant style statement in the modern world because so many men eschew the overcoat in favour of the ubiquitous puffer jacket which you see everybody wearing down the streets when the weather turns a little cold in all of their garish colours and styles they're not very flattering, they're called puffer jackets for a reason, and they really do not help you cut a stylish silhouette on your journey through winter life. The other reason why an overcoat is the perfect thing to have in your wardrobe is because it is not only stylish, but it is incredibly warm. Worn in the typical fashion below the knee, made of natural materials, they are warm and they are snuggly, and they will keep you protected even on the coldest of days. So with a modest investment, you can elevate your style amongst all those other folks who are wearing their down jackets in the street. And I mean a modest investment too, because now that overcoats have fallen somewhat in abeyance in the world of men's style, you can pick them up for a song, particularly if you haunt the thrift shops and charity shops in your communities. You can particularly buy vintage garments of incredible quality, which will easily last 100 years of wear for a very small amount of money indeed. Much cheaper than these highly fashionable brand conscious puffer jackets, which cost far more money than even the finest handmade overcoats. So let me talk about styling your overcoat, but before I do, let us just reflect for a moment on some of the things which are important when you consider purchasing that overcoat. Firstly, the fit of the overcoat that you buy. I always recommend that when buying an overcoat, you should be wearing the clothing underneath it when you try it on for the first time that you intend to wear in the winter. It's no good trying on your overcoat if you're just wearing a thin jumper or a shirt and tie, because in the winter, when you're wearing a thicker garment, maybe a suit jacket, a tweed jacket, it's going to be a little snug. So think carefully about the fit. And if you're buying pre-owned in a thrift shop, don't worry if it's a little bit too big. If you can find one which is of high quality, take it along to the tailor and get it fitted for you. Now, the second thing you need to consider when you're looking at the basics of an overcoat purchase is the material which it is made of. Because I can only recommend natural materials. Stay away from man-made fibers. They will be cheaper, they may look better in the shop, but actually there is nothing like wool, cashmere, or a blend thereof, because natural fabrics always last longer, they perform better, and they look better as well. So stay away from man-made, stick to natural materials. Now, when it comes to the color of your overcoat, this is where you need to be a little bit conservative. Choose colors which are neutral, neutral in palette, because that way they're going to match up with all of the other colors in your wardrobe. And I would recommend gray. I'm wearing a gray overcoat right now, or navy, or black even, or camel, sort of a light tan color, because these colors, well, they could easily be described as non-colors. They pretty much go with everything. Doesn't matter what leathers you're wearing with it, what other, what other uh, colors of under, you know, shirts, like a, a shirt or a suit, which goes with those overcoats, they're always going to match up. So think carefully about the, the color. And also think about the details. There's a lot to consider. Would you be interested in a single-breasted overcoat like I'm wearing, with a hidden, hidden placket so you can't see the buttons? Or would you prefer a double-breasted overcoat? A little bit more formal, um, often found in the vintage world. And a lot of other details, like the buttons. You can have metal buttons, which tend to lean towards the military style, or just contrasting coloured buttons. Many overcoats have um, a breast pocket. Some have a belt. There's lots of little distinctions, little different differentiated colours on the collar and the lapel. 
lots of little things you can choose, which, you know, it, people think, oh, it's just a utility garment. You know, how, how is there much difference between them? When you drill down to it, you will notice there's lots of difference, even down to things like the wideness of the lapels and so on. It's all down to personal preference. Take your time, find out what's out there, and then make your choice based on your own standards and values about the clothing that you like to wear. Now you might think to yourself, an overcoat, it's a pretty bland item of clothing. How can you style it to make it look more interesting and stand out from the crowd? Well, I'm gonna give you five little pointers today, which will certainly steer you in the right direction to elevate you amongst the proletariat and look like a dapper man even in your overcoat. Now the first one is actually something which I can't physically demonstrate because I don't own an overcoat with a breast pocket, all right? All of my overcoats, single-breasted, don't have a breast pocket. And if you find yourself with an overcoat with a breast pocket, firstly, it's a sign that it's fairly good quality. You don't see that in many overcoats. You will find it in many vintage overcoats. So if you've got your garment from, say, a thrift store or a vintage specialist, you may find a breast pocket. But the rule is the same for your overcoat as it is for any jacket, tweed jacket, blazer, whatever you have. If there's a breast pocket in the garment, it's there for a reason. It's there for you to put a pocket square inside that breast pocket to demonstrate your style and a little bit of your panache as a gentleman. And believe me, the very finest dressed men have always known this and they always wear pocket squares in that breast pocket. I'll cite an example. His, His Royal Highness, the late Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, never to be seen in an overcoat without his breast pocket being filled with a pocket square. And to a large degree, the current King, King, King Charles, also the same. If he's wearing an overcoat which has a breast pocket, you can guarantee he is wearing a pocket square in that gap. So don't forget, fill that breast pocket. That's the only reason why it's there. Now, probably the most important addition you're going to make to your overcoat outfit is going to be the scarf. And again, it's got some really positive aspects. It's also going to keep you really warm and cosy on the coldest of days. You can snuggle down into your garment with your scarf up around your throat and it keeps you nice and snuggly. But more importantly for us intentionally well-dressed men, it is bringing a little bit of style to the outfit in the sake of colour pattern and texture and you know it can really make the world of difference to an outfit which is as we've said ostensibly rather bland because if we're wearing neutral colors like a gray overcoat like I'm wearing there's very little personality to this outfit when you throw on a scarf which also frames the face so it's where people tend to look at when they see you they will look at this area of your body and if you've got a nice scarf it makes all the difference now i tend to go for quite strong colors maybe striped just the way i'm wearing now uh, when i'm wearing an overcoat because you can get away with nice powerful colors when you've got such a plain garment alongside it much like i would recommend for the garment itself natural materials only. Stay away from man-made scarves because whilst they'll be a fraction of the price of wool or cashmere or merino, they're not going to look so good. They're not going to keep you looking uh, or keep you so warm, but more importantly, man-made, sorry, man-made fibres, not natural, man-made fibres are an absolute devil for shedding lint, or fluff onto your clothing. You will forever be picking little bits of fluff off the collar of your overcoat. It's not very stylish at all. So stay away from those man-made, go with natural colors, nice, simple, big, bulky knot at the neck like I am, filling the whole chest area, grabs your attention, very stylish. Now the next addition to your overcoat outfit is going to be the extremities, your hands. And for me, a nice pair of leather gloves is a perfect accompaniment to the overcoat look. And for me, it's always going to be leather, all right? I would highly recommend that you stay away from, again, man-made materials for your gloves. Now, don't get me wrong, right? I, I'm a, I ski myself, and there is nothing better for skiing and being in the outdoors in a survival situation than, you know, man-made polyester gloves with down on the inside, keeps your hands really warm. 
but they're not very stylish when you're wearing an overcoat. So I'd put them aside for those extreme situations like skiing and so on. When you want to look your best, go with leather. It looks the most stylish and let's be honest, it lasts longer and it looks better as it gets older because it obtains a patina. Now for me, I have two different tiers of leather glove depending on the type of weather I'm experiencing. So here I've got some sort of kid leather. Uh, these are brown and they're unlined. So they're really good and comfortable for days where it's not super cold. I just want to keep the wind off my hands. And of course, it looks good with the overcoat as well to have a contrasting color at the end of the sleeve. On my hands right now, I've got a thick pair of lined leather gloves because it's sub-zero here in the UK, even though the sun is doing its work, it's warming up a little, but it's still really cold. So I wear gloves which really are built for the environment, nice and warm. If you want to be really stylish, you can go down the path of peccary leather gloves, which are by far the best, although the most expensive. They look great. They're going to get better the years and years that you own them. Now, when it comes to colour of the leather, I would say there's two options really, isn't there? There's black or there's the various variations of brown. Now, for me, a black leather glove is formal. It tends to be something which I would wear if I was in a business situation, certainly to a funeral or something where I wanted to look my most formal. However, for most of the time, I enjoy the little bit of contrast which comes with a little bit of brown. And for me personally, I tend to wear either brown or burgundy shoes with my suits and outfits these days. I've transitioned away from black which I, shoes, which I only tend to wear for the most formal situations. So if I'm wearing brown or burgundy shoes, I will try and wear leather on my gloves, which is a close match. It's the most stylish by far. Now, another item that we can add to our overcoat ensemble, which is purely for decorative purposes, not to keep you warm at all, and I've been wearing one all along, is a lapel adornment. Purely something to add a little sparkle and a little bit of personality to your outfit. Now, adornment is a wide-ranging descriptive term. It could be a small enamel or metal badge, just something which signifies your association with maybe a club, a sporting body, or a group of people, or the rotary, or some other association of that nature, charity or whatever. It could be a boutonniere like I'm wearing. This is an artificial boutonniere in the shape of an Ausweis, and it was a gift from a patron who sent it to me, and now I wear it on my overcoat all the time, and it reminds me of the wonderful generosity of the people who watch this channel. But it's purely there to attract your attention. Like I say, the overcoat can be a little bit bland because of its you know, utilitarian aspect. It's there to keep you warm and it's often quite a boring color. So something which attracts the attention just a little bit, not too much, is the perfect way to go. Now, I'd avoid anything outrageous, all right? You can see some chaps who wear almost like a lady's brooch on their lapel. I really think that's a step too far. It's a little bit less chap than they imagine, I think, when they wear it, but something stylish, something simple. Remember, less is more when it comes to men's style. So something small, just enough to attract the attention is all that's necessary. And finally, chaps, the last thing I'm gonna suggest which will improve your overcoat look and add a bit of style to it is, of course, the thing which you put on the top of your head, your hat itself. Because the hat, particularly the dress hat, has become a real delineating feature in the wardrobes of most men today. Do you know what? I could walk down the high street of my town, three miles away from where I live here, which has got tens of thousands of inhabitants. I might walk down that high street and not see another man wearing a dress hat should I walk down there this afternoon. Because the dress hat has really fallen out of common use. Lots of reasons for that. Men wearing fancy hairstyles, but probably because the ubiquitous headwear of the man today has become the baseball cap. And it's pushed all other caps to the side, which is a terrible shame because the dress hat, be it a fedora, a bowler hat, a trilby, even the mighty Homburg can be worn with an overcoat and it looks absolutely perfect and in keeping with style. 
Now you may want to not want to go as far as the mighty top hat, but if you're a little bit more casual in your outlook to life, maybe a newsboy cap might be the perfect addition topper, so to speak, for your overcoat outfit. I would avoid the flat cap because it is a little too casual for one's overcoat, even in the modern world, but any of those traditional hats is going to be the perfect icing on the cake to your outfit, and it will elevate you amongst the crowds of men who are wearing no hat at all, or maybe just a baseball cap. It really will help you stand out and be seen as the intentionally well-dressed man that you surely are. So there we go, gentlemen. Those were my five tips on enhancing your overcoat style and making you the best dressed man even on the coldest day of the year. I hope you found it useful and something you can apply into your life going forward even this winter. If you have enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like this, click the subscribe button. If you'd like to support the channel, you can simply leave me a comment, you can drop me an email, you could buy me a coffee, it's a one-off thing, or you can become a patron and benefit from the ongoing relationship and additional video content, which I share with my patrons each and every day. So, until the next time, stay warm, look good in your overcoat, and I will see you again very soon.